that possible? Yes, probably, yes. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Please. And second, I, I would switch to Spanish. Uh, porque me gusta un poquito más y porque hay traducción simultánea y porque lo aprendí desde chico. Bueno, básicamente ustedes saben bien los números, amigos. De todo el problema de emisiones de carbono que tenemos. carbon emissions that we have. Agriculture and land use, basically forests, are concerned with, represent the fifth, one quarter of the problem. One quarter of the problem is solved if we resolve that with food production and what we do with our forests. So what's happening as the cities grow, as the population grows, according to the report, the, the new climate economy, better growth, better climate. I really recommend you to read that. It's in the new climate economy point report page. We estimate that for 2050, we're going, we'll have to produce 70% more food in less farmland. And the key here is in, found in several things. One, what obstacles do we have to overcome in order to reduce the emissions that come from deforestation and soil degradation? It's an enormous, another enormous obstacle. It's the type of policies that we still have on this planet. For example, Mexico. I remember and that even in the 80s, Mexico had a commission, a national commission, on uh, deforestation. It had its offices, its own equity, its bureaucracy. And the mission of that government department was to cut down as many trees as possible. What happened? What happened? Okay, I'll be quiet. Well, the whole point was to cut as many trees down as possible in order to, to extend agriculture. It was said that only pavements would not be sown. All the forests had to be sown uh, for agriculture. So all these, the politics in the world and in countries near here, we have agricultural policies, government policies, which is to increase the farm area every year at the cost of forests, and that's deforestation. So first of all, we've got to stop those policies which explicitly seek dis deforestation from the absurd idea that feel that, that thinks that natural resources are infinite. Second, the type of the policies that we have to change involve the policies which are contradictory, well-intentioned but contradictory. For example, well, those that stimulate, for example, they boost economic activity, but end up by deforesting forests. For example, this beautiful stand here that we have, uh, there's a beautiful view here, beautiful forest, a summit, and I think there's a cow or something there, and I don't know. But anyway, I'm sure a well-intentioned government said, we're going to help these poor people. This poor woman here can have a rest, and we're going to give them some support. We're going to give them free water and food for the cow, and we're going to give them calves and so on. And these subsidies for agriculture in the high forested areas, what they do is stimulate extensive ranching, which is finishing, winding, bringing to an end this, this forest. You can see the land is on a slope that's going to erode soon. It'll bring all the soil down with it. It'll degrade further soil, and that'll degrade this forest. What have we got to do? We've got to st stop these contradictory policies. In these areas, we cannot do extensive ranching. And that doesn't mean that we can't help these, these, these poor women like this indigenous woman. It means we've got to help them with different sorts of support, but not at the cost of destroying our natural resources. It means that we have to, for example, give them a payment for environmental services. It means that this woman, we could tell this woman that if she conserves this forested area, which is probably where her community lives anyway, she will earn constant decent money, and that will give her more money than keeping one cow on one hectare. We've got to change our policies. And a third point has to do with the connection with the private sector. This is very important. The government also has to generate po public policies to boost private investment. 
around these areas. But lower down in the valley, there could be intensive agriculture and intensive ranch, not extensive. There is technology now to produce much more meat using less resources, less water, and public policies have to give long-term certainty to these companies. What is long-term certainty? Well. There are a lot of companies that want to invent, uh, invest either in timber or in meat or agriculture. What do they need to be able to preserve the forest? They can have business and they can at the same time in, 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 increase forest, which means that they will be reducing GHG gases. The, the report of the new climate economy says this against a lot of what we people say. We say we can have economic growth and at the same time combat climate change. One of the, uh, the further things is land use. How can we do this? Well, I'll carry on with the same example. If apart from having, for example, a program for environmental services so that these, this indigenous community doesn't deforest this slope in order to have very um, unproductive cattle, if we pay them for conserving the forest, and, and have a rational forest use, it's a plus for this community. And if in the valleys, we can also have in, uh, investors in agriculture or in palm oil in areas where they're not deforesting. And that's very important. It's very important for there to be, the, to, to see the Unilever initiative, for example. They are buying palm oil, which only comes from certified plantations. They are not deforesting. That is a core change internationally. And we have to have, we also have to see what else does the private sector need to invest in the long term. The sector, private sector or ordinary investors, the banks want to lend and businessmen want to make money, but they're afraid that in two or three years, policies will change and the, or, or, or the land will be taken from them or the government will change incentives. And and their business will crash. They're also afraid that uncertainty itself in that area can be destroy any possible investment. For example, a forest plantation of cacao, coffee, paper, or palm oil has to be thought of in, in the long term. And in our countries, particularly those de the developing countries, we always think in the short term. And governments must establish long-term public policy to boost green growth and maintain the forests, then we'll be winning. But we have to think we need clear policies. For example, the price or, or, or the ta carbon tax should be very clearly established in the world. There has to be a very clear message that anyone who pollutes will pay, and anyone who reduces or sequesters carbon will earn money. There has to be a policy, for example, in the development bank. I, I've worked for one in Mexico. I think instead of concentrating so much on looking for individual projects, the bank, the development banks must be guaranteeing or at least taking some of the risk of the future policies on. That's one idea that I've had. If we have a project with a plantation, for example, and you have a rate of return of 15 or 20 percent of the 15, for example, then the development bank should loan, or instead of lending money, if it doesn't have much, it should guarantee that that rate of return will not be affected for sudden policy changes in the long term. And that can really boost investments, which they need so much. And so in summary, my friends, we believe that it is possible to combat climate change and also have economic growth. We don't have to choose in between creating jobs and combating climate change. We can do the same, the, the two things, but we need public policies which uh, enable people to take on the responsibility for the environment, and they do need something to back them. So if we say to the indigenous people, well, don't pollute anything, but you're going to have to starve to death, they won't, do, won't help. But if we can say, look, we can pay you to conserve the forest, then we will all be winning. It will be a win-win situation. Thank you very much.